Hi, everybody. <laughs> this week's episode is sponsored by Construction Noise. Right. <laughs> Condo construction. <sighs> is that good? Yeah. We're hey, back Ray. in Florida. Hello, everyone. We're in the Sunshine State again, even though it's been raining like cats and dogs outside um, for more days than sunny, really. Yep. Yeah. We're back in Terry and Jeannie's condo, aka our second home in Delray. Um, and we feel just so grateful to be able to stay here with friends for like family. Especially because right now we're not living on a boat. We kind of feel homeless. We're, so we're kind of homeless right so now. So we're really couch surfing at the yeah. moment. <laughs> Usually it's, you Usually know, it's like, come oh, take a hot yeah. shower and sleep in a real bed. Yeah, we're literally kind of just bouncing around. Mm -hmm. So we drove down to Florida this past weekend. It's a 24 hour drive, it was pretty crazy. So today on the coffee, I mean, my coffee's not even here. Go get it. That's okay, no. No, just go get it, go get it. No. All right. So, on today's coffee corner. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to you all. Hope cheers. you have a uh, tea, coffee. Drink of drink choice. Drink of choice, whatever you uh, prefer. A glass of ice water for those people staying hydrated. Um. On today's coffee corner, I won't be able to stay for the whole time about where we break down sea wind and boundless and kind of the whys of each boat and what we like and any disadvantages of each boat. Parker is going to explain those details. But I have a, naturally it's strategy week, and I have a six hour team call here in about 10 minutes. So as much as I would love to sit and chit chat about boat stuff, I promise we'll have a Katie technical breakdown half sometime. the people are going to leave now because you're not going to be in the frame you know <laughs> I, i'll make it up you guys to have you. To... if you stay if you stay through parker's explanation which is going to be thorough and informative and you're going to learn and something maybe fun and fun <laughs> and fun uh, i'm you guys just have to deal with me today you will learn something and you might laugh a little and I'm quirky it'll enough. It'll be great. You might chuckle. You, I will owe you a, I'll do my own technical breakdown of something. And that would be really funny. Okay. A Katie's, Katie's technical breakdown or some, something like that. Katie's tech talk. Katie, <laughs> Katie's tech talk. I know a lot of things about tech, but um, I'm just, you know, still learning about boats. Parker's the subject matter expert over here. So, um, as much as I want to stay on and chat for this session, I have to go run over to my office on the Lanai and sit on a call for six hours with my team. Um, so, cheers to you. Have a wonderful day, whatever day you're watching this, and I'll be talking to you soon. All right. Go get them, Tiger. All right. Good luck. All right. Thanks. All right. Cheers. I hope you all have your drink, like we said earlier. I'm gonna set this aside for now, because we have some stuff to go through. As we've stated quite a few times now, we were not on the market for a sailboat. We were blissfully enjoying all the hard work we've put into Sea Wind, and we've been enjoying it for a couple of years now, which is really, really nice. Before we talk about Boundless or even just getting a different boat and what we would want in that boat, let's talk about why I bought Sea Wind. Well, mainly it was the price. Uh, in 2016, I spent $20,000, um, which was most of the savings that I had, on this boat. And it needed a lot of work. I didn't know that. I was just this naive kid who said, wow, this is like a blue water boat because I had been reading on Google, safe boats that can take you anywhere. And so I started finding articles about the Allied Sea Wind and how it was the first fiberglass boat to circumnavigate the world. And I just fell in love with it. And I, we lived in Western Pennsylvania and <laughs> landlocked, no one around me, and none of my friends sailed. I didn't even know people sailed on boats, let alone lived and traveled on them. I'm looking around and I find this listing for an Allied Sea Wind in Cleveland, Ohio on Lake Erie. The rest is history. So I went up there and I saw it and 
struck a deal with the owner and now we uh now we're here uh, if you've been watching the videos for quite a while you're uh pretty familiar with the boat by now and pretty aware of the fact that we have poured our hearts and souls into this boat so the first thing was the price and the second thing was the hull design of sea wind now at the time i hadn't ever sailed on any other boats on lake erie let alone the ocean other than the two small trailer sailors that i had um, my first two boats were, it was a Balboa 20. That's the boat that I learned how to fiberglass on and I fixed it up with my dad. Found it on the side of the road for like $400. Uh, it was filled with rainwater, no windows in it, no hatches in it. And I basically rebuilt it and learned how to sail on Lake Pima Tuning, which is a local lake. Fast forward, I bought a 26 foot Balboa and only had that for a very brief period of time. And then I bought Sea Wind and I had three boats at once, sold the other two quickly because I did a pretty good job of fixing them up, and that's how I ended up with Sea Wind. Coming back to the hull design, I had never sailed on a fin keel. I had never sailed on a planing hull or a race boat or a full keel. I had never sailed on anything. It was just what I was reading. I knew that I wanted something that was safe and sturdy. And Sea Wind ticked off every box, a full keel, with an encapsulated lead ballast. No bolted on keel. I wanted a protected rudder, which a full keel offers because it's the rudder is hung on that, well, on wooden boats they call it, I think the dead wood. It's called a barn door hung rudder. Seawind had that. I wanted a protected propeller and shaft. So Seawind has an aperture uh, in between the, the dead wood and the uh, the rudder and that's where the propeller sits. It's very protected and So if you hit something you don't have a fin keel with bolts that could uh, Be damaged and you don't have a rudder that could be easily broken off or Damaged in some way and your propeller is less likely to get snagged because anything that you run over nets or anything They just get run down the full keel and Slide past the hull. There's nothing like there's nothing that anything can get caught on and one big thing about Sea Wind was it's a small boat. It's easier to handle. The loads are not that great. Smaller sails, smaller sail replacement costs, um, easier to handle for two people and easier for, and an easier boat to learn on. Katie and I have taught ourselves to sail on the ocean with Sea Wind and she is so forgiving and so kind and comfortable and this is a pretty good reason to not sell the boat. <laughs> so yeah, just a smaller cost of everything, less hatches, smaller engine, simpler systems, smaller battery capacity, but smaller systems. So you don't need a large banks. So you don't need a huge inverter. Uh, and so we've through the years upgraded Seawind in ways that are really tasteful and simple, but robust and reliable. And that's, uh, that's why we've had pretty much a trouble-free couple of years of cruising on the boat. Granted, there were a few things that I didn't address in Ashtabula when I was rebuilding the boat that I then had to address, like the, uh, the engine exhaust and a few other things like that. So um, another thing that comes with a smaller boat is smaller fuel costs, uh, smaller water costs if you're paying for water uh, filling up at a dock, smaller dock fees, which is a huge one, shorter draft sea wind drafts four and a half feet and the air draft is just around 45 feet off the water so we can get under small bridges we can get into shallow anchorages we can choose more comfortable spots to anchor she really is like the perfect adventure boat and most important of all one of the biggest attributes that i love of sea wind is we built her there is not a square inch on that boat that we haven't touched in some way and improved or rebuilt or redesigned and now over the last couple of years, we have truly road tested all of those systems and everything has worked beautifully. So that being said, we absolutely love our life on the water. That's another thing that we realized over the last couple of years is we want to spend our lives on the water. So Katie and I have had some really uh, real and honest conversations with each other about what the future for us looks like on the water. Every time we've talked about this, when we say eventually, we were talking about maybe like a five year plan or even longer. We didn't expect to be doing it so soon, but sometimes you gotta strike when the iron's hot. 
when we had these conversations, we realized that for the sustainability and comfort in the long run, we want more space. And it's not more space for more toys or more equipment. It's more so space for us to really spread out because we spend a lot of our time on the boat compared to, you know, our friends that are cruising that, you know, aren't working while they go or they're retired. When you, when you end up in a new anchorage, those people, a lot of times, you know, get in their dinghy and go explore the town. And for the length of their stay, they maybe not be on the boat that much until they travel to the next place. For us, we work so much during the week that we need more space and more ergonomical uh, desk setups for working on the computer. On sea wind, it's really hard to spread out like that. We are making it work and we have made it work, but um, a boat like Boundless or a larger boat in general, you just have that, that freedom to like stretch your workspace out and not feel as cramped. And so that's, that's really important to us. So what do Katie and I want in our forever boat, in the dream boat that we will potentially live on for many years to come? And there is a list and it does mirror sea wind in a lot of ways, but I'm going to go through it because I think these attributes are very important when it comes to choosing a safe and reliable blue water cruising boat. So the first is we definitely wanted to stick with a monohull. Uh, I've never actually sailed on a catamaran. I have sailed on a trimaran, but I just really enjoy the feeling of sailing, you know, when, when you're heeled over and you feel that power. I've heard from a lot of other people's accounts that on a catamaran, there is some part of that that is lacking. So we are definitely sticking with a monohull. As you can tell, we bought Boundless. Um, definitely wanted to stick with a cutter rig. I think the sail plan with a cutter rig and a properly designed set of head sails is like absolutely hands down the best sail plan that I've ever experienced. The third thing is the encapsulated lead keel. We just know that for the peace of mind, a ballast keel that is integral to the hull, the ability to ground the boat and not have to worry about keel bolts is very important to us. And in turn, uh, a protected rudder. So with the more modern blue water hull designs, you have a fin keel like Boundless has an encapsulated lead keel that is a long fin style and then there's a gap and then you have a skeg hung rudder. So the skeg is um, a very strong structure integral to the hull that is support and protection for the rudder. And that's also very important. One of the other attributes that we're looking for in a, uh, our next boat is a longer waterline length. Um, sea Winds waterline length is 25 and a half feet. Boundless has a waterline length of almost 35 feet, 34 feet, eight inches. That's almost 10 more feet in waterline length. And what that means is higher average speeds. Also more comfort, you know, the, the longer waterline spans across waves very differently than a shorter waterline length. So that brings us to uh, Boundless and her specific attributes. She is a cutter rig. Um, and she is a cutter rig that does not have a bowsprit. So that's different compared to Sea Wind. Although I love the traditional look of a bowsprit, I think I like a, a cutter rig without a bowsprit better because with the bowsprit, you have more hardware, you have a bob stay, and a lot of times the bowsprits are made from wood and there's just more maintenance and more things that can go wrong. So with the, with the longer deck length on Boundless, they were able to put that cutter rig and get the spacing correct without having to put that head sail out on a bowsprit to get it away from the mast and make space for the inner force day for the staysail. Like I said earlier, she has a long fin keel with an encapsulated lead ballast, no bolts, and a beefy skeg that protects the rudder and also a very nice aperture uh, for the propeller. Granted, it is slightly more exposed than Sea Wind with her very protected prop aperture. Boundless's hull design is really the best of both worlds when you're comparing traditional full keel boats with more modern uh, cruiser racer 
blue water hull designs. She has more maneuverability because of the gap between the keel and the rudder and the slightly cutaway forefoot, but also she has a long thin keel that tracks well down waves and just performs very similarly to a full keel boat. On Boundless, we are going to have more space for everything, like I was talking about, more space to spread out when we're working on computers, and also more space for our belongings. Not that we want more things. We aren't, we aren't looking to buy a bigger boat to have more toys or to have more equipment. This is really just to be able to spread out and to have some room for guests and crew. One of the big things that uh, attracted us to Boundless is that we are not going back in any way when it comes to comparing the systems on Seawind and the systems on Boundless. Essentially, Boundless is Seawind blown up into a bigger footprint. There is a lot of trade-off. Um, one of the big things is the, the draft on Boundless is six foot three inches. So we are not going to be able to so freely arrive into anchorages uh, oblivious to the tides because we know our four foot and a half or four and a half foot draft is going to make it. Boundless is definitely a boat that we will have to be watching the tides more closely on. But that's a trade off that we're willing to make. Um, she has had new chain plates installed, exterior chain plates like I've done on Seawind. Seawind has her original engine, although it's the trusty Buke and I have a really good relationship with that engine. Boundless has a new beta 50 horsepower engine, and so that is really great for reliability in the future. So, and we'll go over that more in depth when we're finally on the boat, when we move down to Panama and we, uh, we can really show you it in person and really largely learn the boat and discover everything about her along with you. That is the long and short of it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this breakdown of sea wind and boundless and what we want in any boat that we own and live on. So with that being said, welcome to episode 72 of Sailing Sea Wind. Hi friends. Thanks for coming back to another installment of Sailing Sea Wind. Let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this bay that we've called home for a few days. As I mentioned in the last episode, Hatchet Bay is now on our list of favorite anchorages. You can see here how narrow the inlet is, which makes this place very isolated from any craziness going on outside of its walls. This is our last night here, and tomorrow we will continue our journey down the island of Eleuthera to a place called Rock Sound. Katie says, Katie says that I look like a bad boy now with my hair. <laughs> so I have to start doing all the bad boy things now. Like smoking cigarettes and listening to metal. <laughs> that is like not any, what? I'm just teasing. Anyway, Katie says that she really likes my hair. Um, it's obviously dry now. And it is the most amazing thing to not have hair on my neck anymore. Parker went rogue. I went rogue today and really chopped my hair off. I did. Well, Katie did the chopping. You should have seen me try to do it at the beginning. It was really awful. Anyway, um, and then I thought she messed it up because she was like cutting at an angle, but it was the right angle. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. So we are doing a dinner that we've never cooked on Seawind before. Actually something I've never cooked before at all. You've never made it? I've never made it, no. Organic small eggplants that I just kind of, I washed and chopped them up. 
And then we have an egg wash and some almond flour. This is some organic rosemary and we're gonna mix it in with the almond flour to do like an herby kind of a feel. And then also some thyme. Same thing, some organic thyme. Maybe give this like an herby feel kind of. I don't have any oregano. There we go. Put this on here. Okay, here we go. All right, Katie Mae, does it look good? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Mm. Is it good? Is it cooked? Is it yeah, good? Yeah, it's really good. Try it first, too. Okay, I'll try it, please. Mmm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Really good snack. Wow, that's really tasty. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. Nailed it. Alright, we're gonna eat. Say goodnight to the camera. Night. Katie just said that that was one of the best meals that I've cooked in a while. And yeah. I would agree so. That was absolutely delicious. I don't usually pick up the camera again to say it a second time. That was really good. Very narrow here. The channel is deep. Okay. We may have to crack it back a bit. Turn us down to port five degrees. I mean, I mean starboard. Sorry, starboard. Thank you. Well, we were gonna take a car and go explore today, but you, it's not often that when you're trying to travel, what southeast in in the, in the winter in February in the Bahamas that you get a day with like five knots from the southeast to make some miles. Um, and then two consecutive days right after that that are perfect to cross to the Exumas. So it's like, it's, and then you hear all the boats in the anchorage way anchor around you and you're like, uh, we, should, we should just go and like position ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh well, we're on the water and we're going to explore other places. So um, you just gotta go when the weather calls. Katie May coming in clutch with these smoothies. Cheers. Clutch. Clutch. Pina colada. What's in it? Uh, frozen pineapple, uh, frozen bananas, um, almond milk, some coconut milk, and like it's like the full fat coconut milk, a little bit of full fat coconut milk, and then just collagen. Uh, uh, hemp seeds and flax, flax seeds. Mm -mm -mm. It is perfectly calm. What a cool day, huh? Mm -hmm. Feels good to be on the move.
Just a motor in Saturday. But we are making water. How yeah. cool is that? Mm -hmm. Last year we tried to make water while moving and it didn't work. And I was suspecting that we needed a check valve on the intake to the water maker because as we're moving, while water was moving past the boat, it was like creating a vacuum. All right, we're gonna enjoy this. She's <laughs> Oh my gosh. She just looked at us. I know. Oh, I can hear her squeaking. Oh. oh my gosh. We can hear her squeaking. Oh my gosh. Oh. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetie. Oh, another one. Look, 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 look. Oh, oh my see. gosh. Oh. <laughs> wow. How beautiful. Oh, my oh. oh, I got splashed. <laughs> Oh, right here! Holy crap! Hi! You're back! You're back! Oh, this is a cool thing. Wow, maybe they're mates. Yeah, that's our mate. She's pushing up on, look, look how close her tail is to our bow. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. 
What? You're talking when we talk to bear. He was in that one time. This is like one of the greatest moments of my life right now. Oh my gosh. What just happened? I know, they do. How cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, here they come. Here oh. they come. <laughs> They're back again. Hello. Katie May. Wow, wow, wow. They were the cutest. Here they come. One. Watch out, sometimes it starts out the side. Okay. What are you making, my love? Uh, those lime cheesecake bars. They're pretty laborious to make, especially on a boat where we don't have like a food processor. And last time I tried to use the immersion blender to make the crust, which is like dates, cashews, almond flour, vanilla extract, cinnamon, and sea salt. And the dates in a food processor would blend up to be a paste, but they just got stuck in the immersion blender cashews didn't blend up that well. So, 
this time I mashed the dates by hand. I waited till they warmed up, mashed them by hand. Then I stomped on the cashews in a bag to pulverize them. I was soaking the other cashews through the filling overnight. They're in the fridge right now. And then I have to like roll the limes. Then you have to squeeze the limes. <laughs> And it's, it's uh, intense, but it's worth it because they're really good. And so I've learned lessons from the last time, and I'm going to make them a little thicker because I'm going to use a different container. And I'm going to, um, the crust is already like more stuck together than last time, so it'll be more harder, like thicker. And then because I'm using, again, a smaller container, the filling itself will be like thick, like yeah, cheesecake. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm excited. Yeah, that's a good um, I need to post that cookie recipe because I think yeah. uh, Baxter and Lorraine. Lorraine asked for it. So I'm going to post that. These aren't recipes that I like make up. These are just like... Googled recipes. I find them on the internet, so I'll just share what recipe I'm using. But also we make it with whatever we have on hand. So we might change it here and there. And sometimes it turns out worse. Sometimes it turns out better. We are just a couple miles from our anchorage in Rock Sound here. This is the sound. We're just rounding up into that, uh, into the like the, the sound area. We're following in a couple of boats. And yeah, we've had a really good day. The drone footage is, I think, my best yet. We, uh, I know it's very calm conditions, but I'm, I'm getting much better at uh, some creative angles. We've been making water all day. We've made about six, seven gallons so far. Yeah, we're motoring into uh, another little slice of paradise. We've been basically finding little pieces of shade since around noon. And that's kind of uh, that's kind of our life right now, especially uh, on calm days when we're just motoring. The dolphins were amazing. I can't believe they swam with us for about 10, 15 minutes, and I'm just so so thrilled about that. That was just so fun. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. All right, we'll see you guys in the anchorage. Did it? Did you hurt yourself at all? No. Okay. Did it scare you? Uh, well, yeah, but I just reacted and like let go, you know? Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. Good, yeah. So you were taking chain out of the locker and it just went off. Interesting. Yep. The second time it's done that to me. Ever since replacing the bow roller, the very smooth and fast payout of the anchor chain has created some problems. If we aren't careful with how we prep the anchor when coming into an anchorage, the anchor will deploy itself prematurely. Hey, I'm just going to anchor just adjacent off of his starboard quarter. Okay. Which is what happened to Katie just now as she was pulling a bit of chain out of the locker to then preload the anchor for deployment. I'm ready whenever you give okay. me the signal. It's also easy to accidentally pile up chain on top of the anchor, causing it to not set correctly because the chain does not slow down at all when the anchor hits bottom. Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. Going. The old roller had friction and in turn a very nice haptic feedback of what was going on. We could easily feel when the anchor hit the bottom and throttle the amount of chain going out. The new learning curve has been a game of figuring out what feedback still exists and honing the skill again. And also not accidentally getting any hands or fingers pinched.
That was wild. I know, I know. We went forward over our anchor, you know, when we first dropped it a little bit, and I was like, okay, and then it was clear enough that I could see us, like, I'm like, okay, let's see us go back, and I saw it drag, and I saw it dig, and then we just kept going back, 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 and then I stopped it, and the anchor was just like, boom. Oh, no shit. Huh? Yeah, it was great. There you go. Just so you keep falling the other way. Going on a date. <laughs> Rowing me. Rowing me on a date. It's like the notebook. <laughs> Not like the notebook. Not like it. <laughs> Almost there. Hate it. Hate it. We can go with this one. Yeah. Nice work. Bye. Bye, Katie. See you tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. All right. To dinner we go. This place is a whole four minutes. Four minute walk. Go left. I should probably button my shirt up. Yes. Make myself more presentable. I love when a trees are backlit and you get like that silhouette kind of a thing. Wild orchids. This little place right down here. Are you excited? Yeah. All right, this thing's going in her purse. Yeah. All right, what do we have here? We have our cheesecake Oh bars. my gosh, look at this. How are we gonna get them out of there? Mm. Right. Oh, she's going in. Well, it's falling. Oh. Mm. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. A cup of thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bring it up to the camera. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. This is the product of what Katie was <laughs> squeezing the limes yet, or earlier for. Wow, look at that, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. The crust is made of dates, um, cashews, almond flour, vanilla extract, little sea salt, and cinnamon. The filling is 
soak cashews overnight. You can do it also in boiling water for like a few hours, but definitely overnight made it much more like fluffy, didn't it? Um, so soak cashews, um, full fat coconut milk, blinking. Oh, some maple syrup, lime juice, lime zest, and vanilla extract as well. And they call for a little bit of coconut oil to help it really solidify. Um, but we don't have coconut oil in ours turned out fine because the full fat coconut milk really like, you know, hardens up. Um, and that was also just from like this afternoon to now. If you leave it in for like a full 24 hours, it gets stiffer. And if you had coconut oil, it gets stiffer too. But yeah, that's it. It's delicious. You nailed it. Good job.